All right, so we do have, as you can tell, I got uh, Mohammed on uh, online from, uh, I believe you said Tanzania, right? All right, and uh, so we will move through our agenda. And uh, Mohammed, I'll have you kind of over on the side here. So um, if you have anything, I hopefully I'll get you, I'll, I'll uh, get to your attention. So I would. All right. So and and uh, we'll check periodically to make sure you can still hear us. So Tori, if you would do the mindfulness for us, I would appreciate it. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So welcome. We're going to go from our heads and get into our bodies and get ready to govern for this fabulous community of ours. Mm -hmm. So take a deep breath in and feel your lungs fill all the way up and then exhale really slowly and intentionally all the way out. Breathe in and as you breathe in, straighten up your spine, feel your lungs expand, breathe out all the way down. Take a deep breath in and breathe out, landing out of your head, into your body, out of where we've come from, right into this moment. And find a regular breathing pattern, your inhales and exhales, and just see if you can keep your mind focused on the sensation of breathing for a few minutes, finding some space. Check back in with your breathing. And on your next exhale, you can return to the room with clarity and openness and ready for our meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Mohammed, mm -hmm. were you able to hear any of that? Yes. Okay, great. Oh. Uh, no. Um, um, can you send to Jen uh, Mohammed's um, the personal email? Just give me the first email. two letters. Mark. I'm not sure it'll come up as SHA. So at this point, any uh, agenda uh, review items or adjustments? Anybody? <clears throat> wants to look at me talk through <coughs> all right uh, so then uh, moving right along our focus on learning tonight uh, preschool Sean you want to kick off yes I'm, I'm very happy to introduce our director of support services and early learning a new title for uh, uh, director Robin Hood and tonight she's going to talk to us about early learning and specifically uh, Act 166 where we have been early adopters and getting more of our, our young children into uh, preschool. And she's going to share with you some of the exciting uh, changes that have happened in the last year and some of the challenges that we've faced uh, with Act 166 being a new legislation mm -hmm. and uh, show you some of the great things that are happening in our programs. Yay. going on about Winooski's three and four year olds. Yay! And we have a lot of them you're going to find out that are in high quality preschools and it's going to really make a difference for all the kids. 
So what's new? I think the last time I sat with you all, it might have been a year ago or maybe even more than that. Um, some of the things since I've been here before is that shift in leadership that Sean talks about. And part of the work that I'm doing with early learning is also trying to bring the good work that we're doing in Winooski to the forefront. So I'm on the Building Bright Futures Council. Mm -hmm. I just got placed on the Building Bright Futures Steering Committee. Awesome. And really trying to work closely with <coughs> early adopters of Act 166. And I think that Winooski's been a real resource to people that, that never did Act 62 that are moving forward. So we were in a really good place for that. One of the things that's really important to us is to focus on quality and not quantity. Mm -hmm. And so that means grow at a rate where we can still keep up and do things really well. And you'll see we have a lot of things going on and I think we're doing them really well. But we also want to keep our eye on that and be sure that we don't just keep expanding just to do that. And right now, we don't really have a big, big waiting list. We had an opening, we filled it at the Family Center in here. We don't have the waiting list that I think I described to you a couple years ago where how discouraging it was year after year after year you'd have a waiting list that you would put kids on of 30 kids knowing that really there wasn't anything for them. I think the other thing that's new is the change in the kindergarten date which I think the ripple effect is those kids will have something to go to and that's our quality high quality preschool. Um, you should have changed the kindergarten date? We, used to have the start date of kids having to turn five oh, by 1231 right. and this is our first year where um, it's September 1st and I think that's going to really make a difference for kids that are coming into kindergarten yeah. that have had preschool they're coming in they're a little bit older I think we'll see that they will be a little more grounded coming in as a five-year-old and not as a four-year-old. That's fabulous. I'd love, it'd be awesome to look at the data too, yeah. you know, I'm as the years go of where, you know, their readiness is showing. I yeah. think it's gonna make a I'm difference. Yeah. Some other things that we did this year is um, Sean and Head Start supported inviting our Head Start teachers in early to become a part of priest service with us. That we had not done in the past because they really, their work here hasn't started yet. So they came in and they learned all about our policies, our, our, um, our goals, our graduate expectations. They looked at data with us. They worked with teachers during pre-service. So that's really, really positive. Can I just say a moment that preschool teachers are looking at graduation expectations? Yes. That is fabulous. <laughs> We also are doing some collaborative um, professional development and monthly trainings with Head Start. So one half day a month we do um, close early and not have an <coughs> afternoon program and we all come together. We have a whole year planned out. And I think that was one of the things as we were expanding that I said to Head Start and to Sean that if we really want to have high quality programs for kids, there has to be time for learning together for working together and just, you know, that supervision and checking in and getting the pulse of what's going on in the program. So that is something we're really excited about. Good. And again, just a public shout out for our Vermont Community Preschool Collaborative Grant. The BCPC grant has helped us to do things in the new preschool program, the Early Learning Center, that have helped kids to get access to high quality education. Last year we used the um, part of the money to help fund one of the teachers over there, one of the Head Start teachers. Mm -hmm. This year we're using the money towards our contract for transportation because we do bus all preschool kids here mm -hmm. that want to be bused so that there is access because we know mm -hmm. that if we don't provide transportation, it's really hard for some of them to get here. And it seems those funds are so meaningful mm -hmm. when they're put in early education. Mm -hmm. And the ripple effect I is think some of you may have been here last year when we had our BCPC tour and we had a lot of people come in and see what we were doing with mm -hmm. that grant. Hey Robin, can I just stop for one second? Yeah. I wanted to ask, Frank, are you good with the video and the audio or would you like us to move around? Okay, great, thank you. <clears throat> so we're an early adopter and what does that mean? Well, it means we had to transition from what we were doing with Act 62 to Act 166. 
had to kind of um, get up to snuff on the new rules and procedures and protocols for that. But at 66, F-166 really describes high quality preschool as that 10 hours a week for 35 weeks in a high quality program and it can be public or it can be private. And one of the real changes is that they have, it's, it's a statewide um, rate of $3,000 per student. And it used to be that each district or supervisory union could set the rate. So depending, if you were a provider, depending upon who you were partnering with, you might get $1,500, you might get $2,000, you might get $2,200. So what it really does is it provides those partner programs something that is dependable and they know that, okay, this is gonna be equal and I can accept kids from anywhere because Winooski's gonna pay 3,000 or South Burlington and I think that really makes a difference as well. And for parents to get that 3,000 off, whether you're from Winooski, whether you're from South Burlington, wherever you are, I think that's a real positive. Is that, is that for the 35 weeks, Robin? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you have to be three by the same date as your kindergarten date, so by September 1. So we already are starting a little wait list for kids that we that aren't three yet, but we're starting to find those kids too that we know will be three by then. We're looking for them already, and we're already building a list of kids. With all the goodness of F-166, there's some challenges, and this year, um, one of the challenges was background checks because the interpretation of educational background checks is now under F-166 that these partner programs who previously had gotten a different level of background checks need the educational background checks. So we in this region got <coughs> together and talked about what can we do to support that and we decided that each um, supervisory union or district would be responsible for overseeing the background checks of whatever partner programs are in that district, whether we have kids that go to them or not. So we're helping out Winooski Family Center and the Y right over here, the, the um, UVM Medical Center Y. So that's been some extra work for our central office. It's about an hour to process each background check, but we know that it has to happen and we're gonna pitch in and do that work. And um, another thing that we're really trying to do is working with the regional directors of Act 166 is really trying to align things such as payments. If you're a private provider and you're getting your payments, um, you know, four times a year from one school district but only three from the other and this district's paying in this month and that month, we're trying to align that more and more so that providers know when they will get the money. They can depend on it and their programs can remain high quality and not suffer because they're not getting the money when they need it. Mm -hmm. And another challenge I think is transportation. Even though we're a small city, some of our preschool kids were on the bus over an hour at the beginning of the year while bus drivers were getting down the, the the route and all of that. And even though we're a small city, there's a lot of traffic. So it's amazing how long it can take to get here. And we still have some parents that are frustrated that, you know, it's still taking about an hour sometimes for a bus to get here. That's a long time for mm -hmm. little kids to be on a bus. Mm -hmm. And opening the afternoon program did shorten the day by half an hour each of the sessions. So instead of that wonderful four hour session that we mm -hmm. had, eight to 12, we now have two three and a half hour sessions. But we continue to work on those challenges and really try to stay focused on the positives and know that you know it's the communication, it's the thinking outside of the box and we still think we can solve some of those down the road. And I believe we will. So I think what you're gonna wanna know is how many kids, and down at the bottom you see that in bold, we have 119 three and four year olds that are in some kind of high quality preschool program right now. On site between our um, Winooski <coughs> Early Childhood Program over here at JFK and our new Early Learning Center, you can see we have 60 kids that are coming to school every day. 
Down at the Family Center, we have 24. And another great change is the Winooski Family Center used to serve kids three days a week. And um, we asked them, please, 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 can you do four so kids can really get more time with you? And they have agreed to that, and so kids are doing that. And there's our big number of partner programs, 35. That's a lot of partners, and I'm going to show you the list. I won't read it off, but I'm <coughs> sure you're going to see, you know, just names of places where you probably know people that have kids. Just lots of uh, great, high-quality programs. Trinity Children's Center, um, you know, from from up there down to the, the Burlington's Children's Space, out to Pine Forest, out to Williston. Mm -hmm. And you can see there are lots of choices for parents. Um, and, you know, if they want their child at the Lake Champlain Waldorf School, they can put their $3,000 toward that, or mm -hmm. Artworks, or Williston Enrichment Center. And then another list of schools. You can see the Montessori School, Little Ones University, and then down at the bottom, the three programs we have here in Winooski. So that, uh, that is another challenge. With having all those programs, you also want to have some kind of connection and relationship with those people. And you can imagine, we have to collect things like assessments, um, our teaching strategies, goal assessments, attendance, um, you know, just billing, um, sending, sending the money out to them monthly, um, three times a year, excuse me. All of that takes time and takes time from the office. But again, when you see the kids in the programs, it's like just amazing. So the cost really up here is 3000 per child. The transportation for the students on campus. Right now, as I said, we're using some BCPC money, but eventually that will be part of our regular budget. Um, we do have a 0 .5 Act 166 coordinator, and she was doing, that's Maybelline Lopez. She does an awesome job. Mm -hmm. She also was doing um, the, the, the previous um, programming. Mm -hmm. She also, her other half is our Triple E Special Education District Evaluators, so it really fits nicely because a real positive outcome of having kids in school is that we have more eyes on kids, and so you're recognizing if kids have some developmental concerns early on. And again, we um, have our teaching strategies goal assessment, and then we have this year, and another new thing is we did place a program assistant in the new um, program just to help out with the number of kids. We built a new office for the Head Start teachers, so they have an office space they can share and have their things here. So some really good things that, um, this is one of our biggest achievements. We're really excited. In order to be eligible for Act 166, you need to be either a four or five star program. When I came on as director, we were a four star program. Um, we set a goal to become a five star program. Last year, we brought in professional developers to help us in the areas that we were scoring low. We worked really, really hard to increase our, our um, conversations and the way that we were speaking to kids and expanding language. Mm -hmm. And we brought in um, an evaluator to look at that, and now we are a five-star program. So Congratulations. Really it's wonderful. And that was a lot of work from a lot of people, and it's, it's it really is a special achievement to us. And this is just a description of STARS. As I said, for Act 166, you have to be a four or five star program. So it's not just that we're compliant with state regs and we do the qualifications for training, but it's really the support we give families. It's um, a lot of self-reflection. It's a lot of regular assessment. Um, and really operating under all the policies and procedures that you have to do. And someone from the agents, from the state can come and evaluate you any time. And there are lots of things to remember when you have a license like this. So. And this is just what the stars mean. And I'll just point you to that five star, outstanding in all five <laughs> areas. 
but we felt really good when we had the four stars because that still was a really <coughs> solid, solid program. And um, just, I think we're doing a great job there. So again, as I was talking about, the challenge is maintaining that and, and continuing that work so that um, you don't lose sight of all the important things you need to do to maintain a high quality program. So our kids, I think you'll see in some of the pictures that we're going to show, just have lots of opportunities to do things that are really helping their little brains develop. And that's a lot of talking, a lot of really um, good opportunities to expand their language. It's all play-based, so lots of playing, but you will see if you come into the room every two weeks, everything has changed out, and it's not the same thing day after day. The teachers are very, very strategic around their curriculum. Lots of singing, lots of reading, reading aloud, lots of eating healthy. Um, both programs um, have family style, either breakfast or lunch, depending upon if you're in the a.m. or p.m., and then we also have healthy snacks um, morning and afternoon. And it's a family style meal where everyone is sitting together, including the adults, and the kinds of conversations that take place are really, really important <coughs> for kids. And kids learn a lot through those. How to sit at the table, how to take turns, how to wait, how to be part of a conversation, and those are really important. And you'll see that our kids are inside and outside. They are, um, they're out on the playground, even on, on cold and windy days, you'll see them holding on to their little rings and walking around the school and going different places, and it's, it's really very sweet to see. And just, you know, doing all kinds of things, working with apples, uh, making smoothies, um, painting, I, just a number of things. Dressing up, playing in our kitchen where we have made a real effort to put foods in there that are nutritious, play foods, and, and getting kids to really think about food in a really healthy way. And again, a lot of play, a lot of learning through play. So they may mm -hmm. be learning words and how to write letters mm -hmm. from the moment they walk in and they're signing in, whether they're drawing a picture of themselves or putting the first letter of their name, but um, to the things that they're doing when they're um, at that little table you see, and sometimes they play with wiggly worms, and sometimes it's just, it's amazing the things that the teachers come up with. These are the elements of um, play-based education, and I, I'm really excited because I believe the kindergarten teachers, are they there now, Sean, or are they going? Not yet. No. Our kindergarten teachers are going to some training on play-based oh, education. Good. So the, the preschool teachers are really excited about that, and the kindergarten teachers are really excited yes. about that, and so a goal is that when they come back, they're going to get together so they can talk. And more. the kindergarten students will be really excited. I, about I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can see that through that play-based education, the things that kids need to really develop are these skills, the social and emotional, the language development, just, the, you know, they're developing math skills, they're developing mm -hmm. science skills and, and reading and doing a lot with the arts and um, social studies and we have just as many little English language learners in preschool as we do throughout the school, yeah. so um, certainly the English language development as well. And again, that kindergarten readiness is what's happening through all of this. We, um, one of the things by having the teachers come early for pre-service is they were able to look at the kindergarten readiness survey um, data with the kindergarten teachers. And it was not a lot of time that they were together. It was a very beginning of, hmm, what's up with that? What does this tell us? And what are some things that you know, what might this mean and what can we do? So we're in those early stages of getting those two groups of people together. We know we need to do more of that, but we have made the, the beginning of it. And one of the things that we're looking forward to doing is more, um, more of that transition work while the kids are here. So 
doesn't mean they need to know which kindergarten class they're going to, but maybe they get invited over for story time or snacks so mm -hmm. that when they go to kindergarten oh, so in special. the summer, maybe for that week, they already know, oh, I know what snack time looks like in kindergarten, mm -hmm. or I know what circle time looks like. So we're hoping to do more of those things and having them join in a little bit by the end of the year. And these are just some really important characteristics that we believe really affect how well a child will do in school. And if you look at the words in bold, you know from your own children, I know from mine, how important self-control is, having kids develop confidence and curiosity, intentionality, being able to pursue a goal and stick with it, that sense of belonging that's so important for kids, that communication, and learning to cooperate. And I just think about, wow, if, if our kids could, could have experiences with those things and go into kindergarten and feel confident about themselves as learners, then we've, we've really done a great job. <laughs> we talk about those things in our colleges. I was thinking about some remedial training myself. <laughs> Which one? Yes. Well, I just know that intentionality, that goal, whether yeah. it's, you know, the goal of learning to zip your coat and dress yourself yeah. before you go out to recess or stick with a really hard class that you feel like giving up that you know you're going to keep trying. Yeah. I mean, it's a lifelong habit. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's really directly related to that growth mindset that we want kids to develop. One of the things that I am really proud of this year is that one half day a month, we have been really intentional about what we do with that, and we have planned out a year-long work plan. And this is just an example for you to see the kind of um, work that I'm doing with Head Start and special educators and support staff mm -hmm. at that level. And you know, it's from the beginning of the year just talking about needs of kids and how to adapt curriculum to what's the evaluation process for someone that's that young and what are Head Start roles and responsibilities, what are Winooski teacher roles and responsibilities. Um, October, we, we, ha we had a great presentation that we're going to continue because they want more of, of interventions for children with autism spectrum disorder. We have a high number of that in um, both of our preschools. So we had a specialist come in who has been working with our school and just really has done some great work there. Uh, we're going to be working on reviewing parent survey results. That's really important to us to know what do parents think? What are we, where are we really hitting the mark and where are we doing well and where can they see us improve? And then you can see into December we're going to be doing some more with speech and language. And then in January really getting more and more into that kindergarten transition, mm -hmm. that kindergarten readiness. February, we're um, hoping to have Karen Prosiak from Winooski Family Center. They have, um, they're doing a pilot on early MTSS, and we're hoping um, that she will be able to confirm that day. Uh, M MTSS? Yeah, what is it? Multiple, multiple tiers of instructional support. Wow. So really looking at different interventions for students to see if, <laughs> if a student is struggling in one area, what kinds of interventions can we provide to see if that student will respond and that, that will make the difference in helping that student succeed. And then of course in May you can see not only will we reflect but we will celebrate all the good that we've done this year. So important. Mm -hmm. And then just a uh, last a, a quick overview of our two mm -hmm. on-site programs. The, the model that we've had at JFK is the Winooski Early Childhood Program, and that is a that's a program that has an AM and PM program. It's co-taught by a Head Start teacher and a special educator, and so that model looks a little different than the Early Learning Center model, which is two Head Start teachers. Now, if we have students with disabilities in the other program, it, it's just that that kind of support, some will go in and do developmental therapy, will push in the support, but they're not there all day. 
So it's, it's a little different. And the, the early childhood program, we have something on Friday mornings. That's really a four-day program for most kids. And Friday morning is callback for our intensive needs children. And we do more targeted work with a smaller group of kids. And it's just another chance for kids to learn and generalize some more behaviors or activities that they're doing. The um, exciting, some exciting news is you're going to see a commercial, probably in about a month, that's being shot tomorrow afternoon in our preschool. I don't know if I, I don't think I told Sean, and I don't know if you knew it. <laughs> I just found out about it myself um, within the past few days. But the afternoon teacher, Carrie, has been selected by Head Start to um, be that the classroom's going to be videoed for a public service announcement for Head Start. So Winooski's going to be on TV, and you're going to see a really nice public service announcement that um, should be coming out pretty soon. Another really exciting thing that's going on is two of the teachers from our new Early Learning Center that have joined us this year, Liz and Michelle, <coughs> they have been selected to participate in a pilot group where they are doing um, that they are being coached as they're in this expert group of expert teachers and they are being coached and they are being observed and they go and model to other people. So that's a real special thing. And Carrie, the afternoon teacher in, in over at JFK is also, she's also been selected and she's working with a peer group around teaching and looking at practices. So they're really excited and I think those kinds of opportunities are really good for our kids because they are going to try out some of these new things with our kids. This what, is just hey, a, what's the what's CVHS? Uh, Champlain Valley Head Start. Oh, okay, great. I should have put the words there. I will. This is just a snapshot. I don't know if you can see her, but in the front of the room um, by the smart board is Lisa Dole. She's our intensive needs special <coughs> educator and. We have a whole group of teachers there and support staff, and she was teaching them all um, around uh, discrete trials and different things that we do with kids in the, in the classroom. And one of the things that we do is, you saw just the monthly trainings, but this classroom does weekly trainings, so we have trainings every single week where we are really focused and we're trying to really draw upon the experts that are here in our building, but also if we don't have what we need, we go beyond. But we have some people in our building, Lisa, um, Catherine, Levine, our speech pathologists, that are really just wonderful teachers of our staff. And so we've been using them as well as bringing in some people. And we do things from toilet training tips to, um, you know, how do you work with a, a child behaviorally, how do you how do you get kids to pay attention to you and focus and all kinds of good things. Here's just some snapshots you'll see lots of kids working together. And yet if a child wants to go off on their own and do something by themselves, that's an opportunity for them as well. And just a big, big thank you because without the support of the school board last year to redo that room, we would not be where we are and we would not have um, all of the kids that are being served, served. And, and a big shout out and thank you to the Winooski citizens that really support a budget that makes a difference for these kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look at that face. We have, <laughs> we have 100 and some odd other faces of kids that are really getting great opportunities. So I'm here now if you have any other questions or things that you want me to think about, look into, feedback, happy to have any of that. Just wanted to pass a real quick one along. Sean took me for a walk through the, the new room and, uh, they were having applesauce as a snack, but they had made it the day before. Nice. So they made it one day, they ate it the next, That's and so wonderful. shared a snack with them. It was really uh, interesting to see the kids, you know, enjoying the applesauce a little bit more since they made it. Yeah. You know. um, I knew what was in it. Yeah, <laughs> it helps. 
Uh, I just want to say that um, I've been in the school district since family center and preschool, and like, I still have my my little binder I made in preschool, or like the teachers made for me. And just like seeing the change from my preschool days to like how it looks now, it's just really exciting. And I'm really happy for the kids that are going through preschool because I miss preschool. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> and just seeing that makes yeah. me like I want to go back. <laughs> but After days, you just want to go back and have yeah. Yeah. more play-based, right? Yeah. It's so yeah. important. I was gonna say that's the one thing I'm really excited is seeing yeah. this going going to play based and even the kindergarten starting to go into play based because that's such a huge foundational um, building block for children moving on mm -hmm. and they create a lot of those foundations in those early years mm -hmm. to help them add on to it as they learn academically so that is a huge step in the right direction and an uncommon step in the right direction yeah. I mean it's getting there but it's been a long time because I've been in the field for 20 years and mm. used to be like what you have play-based curriculum shame on you so mm. it's so nice and refreshing to see mm. and the the new early learning standards that were um, just finally <coughs> finalized very aligned with all of that yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. well so you said 119 kids uh, that you have identified in the new school that are out there in programs um, are there kids that we know of that aren't in programs? There are some that we know of that are not in programs, really through parent choice. Yeah. There are some parents that just say, you know what, I, I'm doing okay with them at home, and I get them in play groups and um, things such as that. But the, we are, I mean, like we have spent time knocking on doors, uh, calling people. The, the wait list, if we ever get one, is just a couple of kids, and it usually gets filled very quickly. And one of the, the things that we have been able to do, because Maybelline is so creative, is we do have a couple of peer slots in mm -hmm. our Winter Ski Early Childhood program. So if there's someone waiting for that five day a week program, sometimes we can still put them in something for two or three days mm -hmm. while they're waiting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th the other thing I was saying too is the challenge is that Head Start is income based. So there are sometimes parents that would love to have their kids up here on campus, but because it's income based, we don't have a whole lot of over income um, children here. We will take some now and then if, if it means a slot will go blank. But I think that would be a challenge for someone that, you know, isn't eligible for Head Start if they wanted their child to be here. Mm -hmm. But you can see they're, you know, they're finding other places too. There's a, you know, and all of those places that I listed, mm -hmm. those are all now our pre-approved partners. There may not be a student at every single place. Yeah. There, there is at almost every single place, mm -hmm. but some people have gone through the whole process because it is quite a process. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you see fewer home-based programs or smaller programs do it because it's, it's a large amount of time, it's an expense to have the teaching strategies goal, to go through the STARS application, it's, it's a lot. And then you have to bring in if, if you are not a certified teacher yourself, you have to bring in someone to do that. So, um, you know, we're willing to try to help people get started, but that sometimes deters the smaller programs. It's a huge deterrent. Yeah. yeah. I think another kudos to the, to the board and the community would be that we were able to, with your support, make the shift so that Robin could put the energy into this yeah. mm -hmm. by having the director of ELL and curriculum. And there's no way. We would be moving at this pace uh, you're even close to it if we didn't have that leadership mm -hmm. and then she was able to uh, you know really help uh, Maybelline and Maybelline is, is, is incredible and mm -hmm. stepped up her leadership too is a, and, and I would be yeah. lying if I said it hasn't taken a lot of our time yeah. but it's yeah, been sure. fun work right. but we really you know that was our focus this fall we wanted it to be done and done well mm -hmm. and right mm -hmm. so. and enough can't be said for intentional and integrity around early childhood budget. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Are, it is the, the most important focus that we could possibly give for this community to our kids. Mm -hmm. It is transformative. Next to birth to three. 
which is the next goal. Yeah, so certainly. Next goal. But yeah, yeah. Zero, I think zero to five. I mean, when I think of preschool. It is zero to five. It, it actually, zero they five. switched yeah. it from it, birth to birth to birth five. Yeah. I think in general, though, from what I've seen over the four or five years I've done this, is you don't often see start from the budget to implementation <laughs> to results in anywhere near this kind of time. Right. The time between the time we put well that said. room in yeah. and the time we've got people that are considered experts in that room helping others. <laughs> yeah. It's just phenomenal right. to see that kind of a that kind of result. Robin, are you so. using the ASQ? Um, What's that? It's the, it's, um, the it's, a, it's a screening screening for, for autism. It's or any developmental yeah. problems. And it's try, they're trying to make it a statewide program so that children it's starting in daycare or anywhere and it's one screening tool that will carry itself right through doctor's offices, mm -hmm. school districts. Where we see it used more is at the doctor's office or yeah. at more for a zero to three year old. Because there, there's a huge pilot program yes. out right now, yeah. so I've been part of it. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But you know, the other side of it is that that because I'm also the director of support services, I've seen that most of the other directors of support services, we have been collaborating with um, Children's Integrated Services mm -hmm. and um, early intervention, so we're really trying to align the work that we're doing with kids, and I just think it's you know, there's so much more work to do. I mean, we have a vision of where we want to go, mm -hmm. but, you know, that kind of stuff costs money, too. Mm -hmm. And you want to be very strategic in making sure that you do it well and you do it right. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank, you. thank you very thank much. You. I have emailed this to Sean, so if anyone wants it, I'm sure he could send it to all of you. Did you have any questions, Bob? Uh, it was kind of interesting to hear um, that one of the. Um, <laughs> one, one of the one of the issues that was a positive was having the busing of the kindergarten, yeah. the pre-kindergarten kids. <laughs> but then have it show up on the bottom line as a challenge as well. Right. Yeah, right, right. So you yes, never know. I, absolutely. Yeah, especially in light of our current discussion with everybody else about yeah. transportation, it's just harder than it looks. Yeah. 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 Which is crazy. Yeah. All right. you, so, so one last question, maybe this is for you, Sean. But so 119 this year is that a, significantly more than last year, or the, or the previous years that were in early childhood programs? In yes. Do you know? I don't remember what the number was last year. I think, I think it was in the 80s. We were in. We might have hit 90, so, yeah. 92 or something. Yeah. But and we're talking half day. 119. Yeah. In half day programs. Yeah. yeah. Have to like have to handle it or just have to? Pardon me. But well, minimum. Some of those kids in other programs may be. Some of day. those kids yeah. may be. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum ten hours a week, program. thirty-five minimum. hours. Yeah, yeah, to qualify for the three thousand. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, great stuff. Thanks, Robin. Right, yes, thank, thank you very much. Everyone. Thanks, Robin. Thank, thank, thank the staff for all the hard work they've yeah. done. I know it hasn't been easy. So we appreciate it. They're good people. Thanks a lot. Have a All good right. night. Good night. Thank you. Public comments. <coughs> <laughs> Set up a bunch of chairs. That was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, consent agenda. We have our uh, the policies been working on over the last couple of, of uh, sessions here. Uh, combination, combining the harassment, hazing, and bullying into one and repealing the other three. So just that as a pretty much significant note in that whole piece. Uh, I would accept a motion to accept a consent agenda. So moved. All right. Any other discussion in there? No seconds. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> like, stay, 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 stay. All, right, so all, those, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consent agenda. Then uh, so six here, executive limitations, working with the uh, review of the budget parameters. We have a, we didn't have a soft copy of this by chance, right? Mm. Okay. All right. So Thank you. Right. See this in the report? Oh, okay. And so what I asked Sean to do here is 
as we're going to start in on the budget, I believe December 2nd is our uh, next session. Uh, again, a, a shout out to bring a budget buddy or two. And so what I tried to do is get a, at least a baseline of what we've got to work with for this year. So, so this document probably looks familiar to you. If you remember from the September meeting, we had a little bit of discussion just to understand what the allowable growth piece looks like um, for the upcoming two years in, in building budgets. And what I added to the document at the very bottom to uh, kind of reiterate for the board and for the community is uh, that while we are, we are in the middle of the range of allowable growth, 2.75%, and the range is from zero to 5.5, uh, giving us a total of $325,000 that we could add year to year, in our current uh, budget modeling, given some assumptions um, uh, around uh, staffing, around health care, uh, and so forth, we believe right now that we would be in the position uh, um, of reducing up to at least $280,000 to maintain what we have um, in the budget. So it, it uh, uh, it looks very challenging right now based on the assumptions that we have and the percentage that we have been given to work within. Wait, let me ask a clarify. I might have heard this wrong. We would, we're we're going to need to reduce $280,000 from the budget right. to make the allowable growth. Correct. Budget. To hit that cap of $325,000 or 2.75 growth year to year based on our current modeling, and this is not adding people, program, anything, mm -hmm. we will have to take 280 at least out of the budget. Because we, we want to spend a total of 600000 more, and we only yeah. have 325 Right. So the whole piece of Act 46 there that's catching up to us is the fact that it is a percent increase on your current spending for... Um, Pupil? Equalized pupil. It's not a state average or a, uh, a, a limit. It so is on there current again, spending. while we kept our belts tight, we are now somewhat being punished for it. Yeah, but we have a better percentage rate than most. However, it doesn't negate. Right. And, right. and, and if you go, if you if you go, freeze right. inequity. Right. Well, I, I would say if you, if you were to look at That's right. Winooski uh, School District spending over time, you know, we discussed this the last couple of years that we were in the bottom quartile. Yeah. Very fiscally responsible. Um, so, but but districts and supervisory unions who had been spending at a higher rate and had higher uh, um, per pupil spending. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in a similar percentage growth that we are. Yeah, why is that? So they're, because it's based on last year's. So if you had spent, 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 yeah. spent, but then last year you, you were lower. You were lower on the spending. Yeah. Right. So for the record, we are freezing inequality. We right? have brought like that here's inequality. Directly. Okay. We and so just continue to get too. clear yeah. about yes. education being equal. It's not. Right. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's crazy though. I didn't. I guess I didn't realize. Yeah. So I wanted this to be a perspective to set where we're going. Yeah. As, as to yeah. try to level set what we've got coming in front of us. The other thing that I would I would add is that there's a great deal of advocacy happening around the state, um, where from at the superintendent level, um, in terms of resolutions from the from the BSA, uh, at the the. Vermont School Board School Association Board. level, there's also a resolution. There's a, a lot of advocacy happening with individuals and small groups with the House and the Senate uh, Education Committees at this point. As we're, as we're getting to the point where our, our, our uh, budget modeling is getting more clear and we're realizing the impact, we're able to share that in a more specific way with our legislators and let them know what the true impacts of, of uh, uh, these spending caps are. So Sean and I have met with Clem and Deanna, along with the city folks, to go through what are the list of items that are on our, on our minds that should be on theirs and their agendas. And this obviously was one of those topics to, to bring forward. <coughs> Unfortunately, from a timing perspective, um, 
we're going to be in a situation where we have to do the negotiations, we have to do the budget, and the outcome of this, if it's going to change at all, is going to be very, very late in the process if we're going to be able to do anything with any changes at all. So, you know, we'll be voting on a budget in the first Tuesday of March. This likely won't have much resolution before April or May. So we have what we have unless they're going to do something quicker in the timing they would have to they would have to come back into session early in order to make any changes and and those changes would need to be you know communicated at the very latest in, in the december time frame for us to be uh, uh, nimble enough to do anything in early january when budgets need to be uh, completed in order to meet the the, the warning timelines Is it a two percent cut on our fifteen million dollar budget or so? Yeah, we're at about fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, so we're at three percent, two and a half. To the two eighty. To the two eighty. Yeah. yeah. And that has again some assumptions in it on what we would have expected to go forward with under normal circumstances. So there are some uh, other assumptions in there of, you know, what would we have done, and where does this put us mm -hmm. with where we're going to be. Yeah. So yep. they're, they're, it's not dead flat to this year. Mm -hmm. right. So mm. that's not to reduce, or not, not to uh, negate the challenge we've got in front yeah. of us uh, by any means. And all that money we have for capital projects is uh, in the lockbox, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, you know, you get into, you know, the, the, the general, the, the capital reserve Piece and you got to be really careful yeah. about that because yeah. you, again, we need that money. You do it well. No, you do it the first time, yeah. and once you put something into place, you've got to support it. Yeah. And so you've got, at some point in time, when the drug wears off, you got to kick in and you got to support it. All right. So that's a uh, very reluctantly done at that point. It, it may be an easy band aid, but it is a dangerous. One. But right, but right. but you're talking about the excess from each year. Like we can't right. pull from what's already in there. But if right, we had right. an excess this year, which we usually do, right, fifty, sixty, a hundred. Yep. You're saying. But even that, is, even that yeah, ends up being drug a drug that if it goes yeah. away, mm -hmm. you got to put it back in the following year because you've got a program that is now using it. Right. Although in this case, considering that there may be changes coming to this rule over the course of the coming year, it could be a short-term solution that would make sense given possible changes to this rule. Well, the bottom the bottom piece of this right. then is, um, and I'm not sure exactly, I think you're saying that if we use it, then, you know, it may, some things may change yeah. and allow it to, to be overcome later. Exactly, it will um, ease our dependence the, on that. Yeah, and, the, yeah, the double taxation piece of going over the 2.75 right. is going to be a tough piece as well. So, right, no, we don't want to do that. So right. that that's, right. goes, kind of fits right. with that, so. Well, and in talking to my colleagues, you know, there's a, a lot of people in similar situations, and yeah. I think if you go back to the times of the challenges for change a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, and and just the difficulties in in budgets, um, you're not you, there's nowhere to cut books and supplies and equipment and stuff like that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's just you know, it, it's program, it's uh, and as program, it's it's people. Yeah. yeah, and. As we know, for us, <clears throat> in our unique uh, uh, population, uh, we're a pretty labor-intensive organization, and we need to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we can serve our, our students well. And so uh, I think that is at the heart of what our challenge is going to be, yeah. is how do we serve our kids well in the way that we have been and continue our trajectory mm -hmm. when we're looking at having to cut program and or people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the same time, I look at this, and if you're a college, you're telling you the same all over the state, then it's achieving exactly what they set out to do, which is to reduce the increased expenditure every year, whatever the consequence. Right. I mean, right. It's, 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 it's working. So even, <laughs> the, even if it unintentionally is perpetuating inequality. Oh, sure. In yeah. schools. No, if the goal is, is, yeah. is you know, the bottom line discussion. Yeah, turn, right. turn the yeah. curve, the expense curve down, and, yeah. this is, and this is the pain that, yeah. you know, everyone was right. eventually expecting and here we are but right. fighting against it and uh, I'm curious to see you know how much noise we can make and what sort of resistance there is to that noise yeah. 
Well, I, I think, we'll have, you know, the, the, one of the main goals, if you go and look at the goals of Act 46, is the expansion of learning opportunities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. And as you look around the state, that is, in fact, going to happen in, in some cases. In, in mm -hmm. many places, it's going to happen. It's, it's a different discussion than we're having here. So, yeah. All right. That's true. So, and we'll have, uh, as part of our annual agenda, we will have Clem and Deanna here um, at some point. I forget if it's in January. <clears throat> Maybe it's in January to hit them just before they go in, but that's 92% yeah. of the way through our budget cycle at that point. So We'll, stay, you, we'll stay in touch with them yeah. now, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said the SBA is uh, crafting language that, that would propose easing the restriction or what are they yes doing? okay I, I don't have the resolution in front of me but yes um, that's it either removing it delaying it or modifying it I think to that effect yeah. all right any other uh, thoughts coming to a coming to a computer terminal near you soon <laughs> And again, I, I think that's, uh, I believe our first meeting is December 2nd based on a calendar we set up. And again, I'd ask if you can bring someone along with you to help us work through that. That would help on the other end as well. All right. Uh, then uh, monitoring report. Uh, this one here is... This, Oops. Twister. No, no, hold on. I think I've got, jumped one uh, frame ahead of me here. No, yeah, superintendent succession. Right. So in the in the list of our two policies being reviewed, or four policies being reviewed every year, this mm -hmm. one is the second time around uh, for the succession in <coughs> case something should happen, which we certainly hope nothing does. So and, the uh, in, in review of this uh, um, monitoring report, uh, it, it appeared to me to be in order and not need significant changes. The only changes that I made were uh, updating it to reflect our new elementary principal, Sarah Robb, in those mm -hmm. different roles mm -hmm. um, down in the, the last uh, number five and, and five through eight. And this then is a uh, is a discussion. So any, I don't know if anybody has any any comments. We will accept this through uh, consent as we've process we've adopted. We'll accept it in the consent in December. But are there any uh, questions, clarifications? Do the whole leadership team come to a school board meeting? In the case of. Uh, something happening to yeah. to Sean, I think the answer is we would have to have at least one of those until we figured out where we were going. It probably would be the first one to make sure we had everything covered, which... Sarah Mia? At, at least, yeah. And probably Robin and Rebecca, because they have between, you know, it, it spread pretty well amongst the... The yeah. whole crew. Yeah, yeah and to, I think to me that would be covered in number six, uh, executive branch leadership team. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they would, mm -hmm. the two of them would decide whether it would be one or both of them, and then it, depending on what's on the agenda, um, would bring one or more of the others mm -hmm. if there's you know fiscal, legal, so forth. Yeah. And at that point, we'd have to be talking about an agenda that gets the bare minimums covered to make sure we're covered. <clears throat> leave the work to be done but I, you know I, I think back four or five years again on this thinking that we're now looking ahead at what would happen if rather than I don't know what we were really looking at in terms it's of succession but yeah. it was a cold start I think so this it's at least comforting to know that there's a plan in place to get it all the files clear plan in place it's, so it's nice that's uh Policy governance, uh, Pat, I think, again, <laughs> just helping for the clarity, yeah. the clarity of the focus and the vision. This would help uh, my daughter Eliza 
knew that Sean was going to be out of town for two days at a conference. She's like, well, who's going to run the school? No way. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I said, well, he was already out of town. She's like, but I noticed he was gone. So who's running the school? I could give her this plan yeah, and let right. her understand. We'll send her the link. Send her the link. <laughs> Here's I, I, the plan for who's going to be running the school. I think that's a tribute in another respect, too, that the visibility is Well, there that's what well. it was. She uh, said, you know, he always stands outside of lunch when I go to lunch, and he wasn't there for two days, and I noticed. <laughs> so I want to know who's running the school. We're setting an expectation. She's, she's got me pegged. Like. She does. She's watching. <laughs> no, I'm around. Yeah. <laughs> Something to talk about routine I'll make sure as well. I send her this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, uh, you know, Sean and I have talked also about, and, and I think we had this discussion several months ago, and that is about doing more monitoring reports in a year, but until we get the end squared, we've decided to stick with the four and the repeat over two years rather than doing all of them in one. So mm -hmm. while we get the ends and the metrics on the ends squared up. Yeah, and there's a few of them that I think that have, uh, they lend themselves to a much more automaticity than others. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them I think that's pretty easy that can be run through more okay. frequently. Okay. Yep. <coughs> all right. Um, and on, okay, so we'll move, we'll move on then to uh, student report. Who's going to start? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> happy Veterans Day, everybody. Thank you. Yes. And happy also Veterans. happy Diwali. Diwali. Um, and happy no school. Uh, Thanks right. for coming. Yes. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Thank that. you. <coughs> so dedicated. Effort. They just woke up. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, that. lovely. How was breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing rainbow in the morning. This is definitely the evening. So. I'm a bit hungry. Good thing. But, uh, yes. yeah. All right. So we'll start off uh, with prom committee. Um, prom committee. Our theme and location is still in the in the lowdown. But um, our recent fundraiser, our Yankee Candle fundraiser, we have raised over seven hundred dollars um, from that fundraiser, uh, which is amazing. And. Uh, next fundraiser will be cute little snowflake grams throughout the high school in December. <laughs> um, it's just some fun stuff. We want to make the fundraiser. It's fun for the students, but something where we could also make a profit from. Um, the VSBA is next on our list, as mentioned in Mr. McMahon's board report. A group of high school students, I think, was Holly Turner, Jared Fountain, and Chanel Bailey. Uh, all went to the conference with two teachers, Tom Perry and Matt Webb, and spoke about their experiences with student voice leadership and the new things that Winooski is doing and really publicizing what we're doing and growing. Um, on the 29th, students from Ms. Pocket's accounting class traveled down to the kindergarten to help the kids carve pumpkins and then play some games with them. Mm -hmm. um, on the week of Halloween, students from Ms. Pocket's information processing class also traveled. You repeated that. Anyway, oh, so Oops. they also walked the kindergartners down to the roundabout, which I find is sweet. Yes, <laughs> To see the pumpkins? Mm -hmm. bring bring pumpkins. pumpkins? To bring their to bring, pumpkins yeah, down bring the for the pumpkins display. Down. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, also connected to information processing, um, there's a new typing game that's been introduced into the class. And uh, are you playing it? I'm not taking the class this year, but it's spreading throughout the school. And there are talks about a high school typing tournament using Whoa. that game. Is so, this Nitro? Uh, nitro, nitro type. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And so um, it's going to be their thoughts about it. And there are a few people like me who are very pumped for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next though, we have four students from Winooski's band that participated in the Champlain Valley District Concert Band mm -hmm. last weekend on the 6th and the 7th. Uh, it included me and LaDonia. There were two <laughs> flutists, <laughs> one saxophone player, and one percussionist that participated in this two-day event. It was about like 10 hours of rehearsing, and then we Whoa. had an hour and a half concert. Yeah. We were given sheet music about a month before the concert, and then we practiced the music together as a band all day on Friday and Saturday. And then we performed the pieces at our concert late Saturday. 
Um, mm-hmm. Also, on November 6th, the entire school watched a play, Snow White and the Ten Dwarfs. Yes. Ten. Ten. Yeah, the play was well received, and all the students in the play put on a wonderful performance. And I've heard some pretty cool stuff happening in the play, so Mm -hmm. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Also, the Roland Conference was on October 29th. A Mm -hmm. mix of middle high school students and Mm -hmm. teachers were represented from Winooski to go to the conference. The keynote speaker was Dr. Yang Zhao, who, um, as I heard from one of the people who went, had a presentation that featured Kim Kardashian on the screen for at least seven minutes. (laughs) <laughs> I seems, don't know. Really good. I don't know the context, but um, <laughs> interesting. And um, I was also mentioned in Rebecca Holcomb's speeches for these past two conferences, which I find pretty awesome. Um, conce- uh, that concerning equity in test scores and mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, did Did you say that you were quoted by her? I was quoted. Oh, by okay. Her. I just said, didn't hear that clearly. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. I okay. want to make sure everybody heard that. What oh. did she quote you as saying? Um, so she was talking. She's. I think she's debriefing about a lot of the things going on in Vermont education systems right now, and because of the new change in test scores, she started mentioning equity, and then like how there are some negative impacts because of test taking, because of the culture that. You, the United States has developed mm-hmm. and um, she just quoted me on something I said at our last state board meeting about how mm-hmm. test scores are often demoralizing and could actually make students feel less motivated to do um, to perform at their best mm-hmm. and actually try um, so I was mentioned mm-hmm. it was pretty cool um, well done <laughs> <laughs> that's the perspective they're looking for so yeah. Yeah, we when you ski <laughs> Um, so, and not only that, a few days ago, actually on Monday, we had two students, um, Keen Nguyen and I went to Dartmouth College for a really cool day trip. Uh, it was with the Upward Bound program, which is a college prep program. And so for those of you who don't know what Upward Bound is, Upward Bound is basically a, like I said earlier, a college prep program in which it invites high school students from Minuski and Burlington for the UVM campus to really teach them about learning about college and really pursuing their passions and not giving up on college because it's, say, they are low income or their parents never gone to college. And it just really gives students a chance to really pursue college and learn more about that. And uh, so there are a lot of cool college trips that occur in the year, and I thought that I, I would mention it since I don't think I've mentioned Upward Bound before. Um, not only that, there was the Vermont Creative Summit Conference, which was last Wednesday, I believe, and two students, uh, Chanel Bailey and I, we participated in the Vermont Creative Summit, hosted by the Vermont Arts Council in Montpelier at the Vermont College of Fine Arts. And uh, I was a moderator of a panel talking about Act 77, which is the personalized Mm. learning plans. Um, And it featured students from South Burlington's Big Picture program, Montpelier's SOAR program, our iLab, and also Cabot School's new educational and personalized learning plan system. And it was really cool. There were a lot of personal stories shared and how, and like the impact of personalized learning plans. So Mm. Vermont's doing very well. And you moderated the conversation. Yeah. That's a pretty cool role. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. It was fun. It was really fun. I enjoyed that. Well and done. So, yeah. You were literally everywhere. Right. <laughs> literally, <laughs> you were everywhere. No wonder you're so tired. Just woke yeah, up. <laughs> LaDonia, we both know what happens in the afternoon. No? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime <laughs> afternoon. Uh, continuing on. Uh, the first <laughs> middle and high school orchestra, of course, and uh, band concert is on the 19th at 7 PNC. Uh, the PTO craft fair is on the 21st. The mm-hmm. trend show is on December 5th. Uh, Winooski's second <coughs> annual STEM night was held on the 29th. Mm. Things were a little rowdy, but overall <laughs> went very well. The event was very exciting with many people attending. Mm-hmm. Uh, students were very engaged and enjoyed themselves in their workshops and were appreciative of the community's involvement. Ms. Vermont and other STEM uh, college representatives showed up to help out. Mm-hmm. And Ms. Vermont enjoyed it so much that she's coming back for free to work with the middle school s- schoolers in their science classes. Cool. Which is That's super cool. Wonderful. Yeah, and, and then the iLab share name was held on Monday, the 9th. And then, um, so for some sports stuff, 
Uh, the girls' and boys' athletic banquets were held to wrap up the sports season. Awards were handed out, some of them, for example, being most exciting player to watch and fan favorite. That was given to Vishnu Karawa. Mm -hmm. And most improved, given to Mariah Mativier and Nikar. And Vishnu and Nikki Dang were nominated for an all-star soccer team. And mm -hmm. they were chosen by their coach. Wow. And Riley Corrigan got an honorable mention for the team. And then mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. football banquet is being held on the 15th. And speaking of football, Brandon Bigelow and Abdul Arba were nominated to play in the North-South football game. And so seniors from all football teams in Vermont were chosen by their coach to be nominated and selected for an all-star team. And students from the North of Vermont make up a team and play against students from the South. Mm. This game is this Saturday in Middlebury. And then basketball season is starting. Uh, some dates. The first varsity boys game is on December 5th at Stowe. The first JV and varsity girls game is on December 9th against Virgins. The first middle school girls game is on December 10th at St. Albans Town. And the first middle school boys game is on December 11th at Grand Island. And then over to the elementary. Uh, middle school and high school students have been heading over to the elementary to be reading buddies. And even some older elementary students are helping the younger students read. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dave Pilkey, the author of the Captain Underpants series, one of my favorite series as a kid, uh, donated $1,000 to the library. Get out of town. To yes. this library? Yes. That's awesome. That, that is well, fabulous. Through the Super Flying awesome. Pig bookstore in Shelburne. Wow. Yeah. Is he from Vermont? He's not from Vermont. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think. That's pretty cool. It's thoughtful yeah. of him. Yeah, it's mm. amazing. What a guy. What uh, a super underpinned guy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a superhero. Superhero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, continuing, Jarrett Krasica. Yep. I think I said that right. Uh, children's book author came in Lunch and talked to the second grade. What was that? Lunch Lady Series, another great yeah. one. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> another great one. Don't know that one. Uh, I'm sure I'll look it up later. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of young adults in the elementary lately. The Lumberjacks hockey team has mm -hmm. come back once again to work with the third grade. The St. Mike's freshmen are working with first grade ELL students. And UVM juniors are scattered throughout all the classrooms. Uh, the money from the book fair was turned into scholastic dollars and was given to every class. So now every class has $90 to spend on books. Uh, the December concert is coming up soon, and then break is coming up as well. Which <laughs> the we Thanksgiving break? To. Yes, Thanksgiving break. It's the whole week, right? And parent-teacher yes. conferences before yeah. that. Parent-teacher conferences. Yes. Parent-teacher conferences on that Monday. Yeah. Gloss yeah. yeah. over that back. <laughs> so. All right. Yep. That's yeah. it. Yep. Great. So a rowdy STEM conference, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of folks. Over yeah. 300. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. so well attended. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, siblings, the whole, every a lot of people were here. That's great. Yeah, yeah. it was all in the library. It was really mm -hmm. well set up. Mm -hmm. Kids ran the stations. Cool. It was fabulous. 3D printer back there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And VSAC provided the dinner. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. There's a lot of fun stuff there. It really was. Mm -hmm. okay. Of course, Miss Vermont. Well, it's good to know what we have to prepare for. Since it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing that a, a science and technology night mm -hmm. is pulling out this many folks. It's yeah. really, and yes. kids were excited to be running their stations. They were really psyched to tell you about their stuff. That was really cool. So now we know what to expect. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Exuberance. Yes. Mm -hmm. For science, math, and technology. Nice. nice. It's a good problem. Ratting yep, is <laughs> around mathematics. I mean, you can't ask for more. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. That's great. All right. Thanks again. Um, we had on here the report on the, the VSBA annual meeting. Sean and I were able to, to attend, and I think in his board report, yeah. and Rainbow mentioned it as well, we had uh, good representation on uh, day one in the morning for our, our kids. It was very heartening to see for what's this, this third year mm -hmm. in a row we've had since the the partnership presentation three years ago mm -hmm. last year we had representation this year there was a good uh representation into what it is we're doing here in the i lab the math lab um 
Chanel Bailey seems to be showing up almost in as many places as you are <laughs> in the rainbow lately. So, but can she it's, type? That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, she dances. Oh. Yeah. She, she, oh, I can't oh, dance. You yeah. dance with your fingers. She dances. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, uh, I can't dance for life. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, they had uh, you know several sessions, uh, as they always do, four or five sessions to choose from. Mm-hmm. Um, we did the I forget which the first one we did was uh, policy governance. And it would talk about Act 77, right, community, and community engagement. engagement around multiple Ooh. pathways. And right, how do you talk to people about what it is that's going on, the changes that are coming in the schools? Mm-hmm. It's going to be one of our key pieces that we have to, to do over the next year is stay out ahead of the communication curve on what the changes are, because I know it's a radical change for some, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. My, other, uh, my other session was... Uh, board chair 101 stuff just Ooh. to try to figure out how how to do this job so is it tight in <laughs> long the policy as you, governance? long as you yeah it was kind of it was kind of tied all together okay. a little, well we tied it to it and yeah. um, one big discussion was uh, superintendent uh, evaluations yeah. which we did tonight we'll do in a couple of months we did the annual evaluation last month but it's kind of an ongoing piece with policy governance. And when you look around the state, a lot of folks either don't have something formal set up, or if they do, it's been a very conscious effort to try to put something in place. So it's it's a unique, I think it's more of a unique situation to have a good plan than not. So it's uh, happy with that. Mm-hmm. Well, At least I, those I, discussions. And I think you guys should be really proud of being one of the the front runner boards around the state and policy governance because it is really starting to take off. Yeah. There's okay. the SBA and others who support that development at the board level are having a hard time keeping up with it. And there's a lot of requests and, mm-hmm. and boards are really interested in it. And well, I think it, because they're hearing good stuff mm-hmm. you know, from others, including yourself. So. Well, it just makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a really wonderful way to run an organization, especially education. Yeah. It, it certainly seems to be hitting right where it needs to hit. Um, and so on that point, then, um, I mentioned that the staff, the, the uh, first day the staff was in, I came in and gave them a little blip, like I always do. And mm-hmm. one Did of the things cry? is about a bike ride I took this summer. <laughs> and I got home, I, I went with Chris Magistrali. Right. And we went and we got home. And when I got home, he sent me a picture of me from behind while he was oh, riding. Right. And then he sent me three more pictures of scenery along the ride. And he, I thought he was trying to catch up to me, but he was putting his camera away. <laughs> Moral of the story is no matter how good you think you're doing, there's always more you can do. So with that in mind, I got an uh, item here to, to reach out to Val to see if we could get to the policy governance 201. Yes, what's, the, please. what's the next step? Yes. So how do we keep... How do we keep uh, moving in a positive mm-hmm. fashion and not get complacent. So mm-hmm. I think we talked about that being mm-hmm. uh, potentially a four-hour session. I think maybe a Saturday morning. Is that what we had come to? I can't okay. think of anything better to do on a Saturday morning. <laughs> the the only, better, is the only other day better than that would be a Sunday morning. <laughs> we'll have Sean bring the coffee. Oh, wait, no, this is our thing. I'll bring the coffee. That's right, okay. Right. Waffles. So I'll reach out to her, see if I can get some dates. We'll get a... We'll get a time out to see what we can do. And Mohammed, you said you're back in uh, you're back in town sometime middle of December, so we'll try to plan it for just after that. Um, so anything else? I think the rest of the annual meeting was we had some legislators there while we uh, tore into Acts 46 in pretty good shape with them there. So it worked out pretty well. It was a pretty broad slapping. Excellent. <laughs> from around the, pretty much from around the state. Yeah. So the last item, um, the last item on here, I didn't want to minimize, and I wanted to make sure we saved a little bit of time for. Um, we took this up last uh, month for the first time. Uh, it was uh, Julian, Jen, and I here, and we wanted to wait for um, Tori and, and Muhammad to get back to have the deeper discussion. And that is on our, and and back to the policy governance piece and not getting complacent, how do we look at what it is we do and make sure that we are being true to what it is we should be doing? 
Okay. That is the same policy interpretations that Sean's been doing on his. Mm -hmm. How do we want to do it on ours? I did one some time back, and then we brought this one, uh, 4.1. Jen just sent it out, uh, the that. link, mm -hmm. um, to everybody. But, but so it's not like a completed one. It's ideas of how to format so that going forward, mm -hmm. we have a, for, a format to use doing <coughs> Because right. the, the only thing Mike said that they that they provide with is like this outline box thing, which Sean does not use, and Sean's makes more sense of doing our interpretation and how because so Mike and I went back and forth and everything over. So I'm like, well, I think it needs to be more of a board effort because we're all going to be doing it. Right. Did we even schedule ourselves for who was going to take passes at it? You scheduled me. First. We did. Yeah. Right, because you weren't there. That was exactly. <laughs> I fell victim to that one. I, right? My recommendation <laughs> is to scratch all of the boxed area and start I right from the um, right above the interpretation. I don't know what page that is. Do you follow? Yeah, it was just so right it says, where like, the with respect to the provision of its policy 4.1, and then our interpretation would be, and then the data to support that. And then um, we would be reporting in compliance. Then scratch the rest of it. Because all of that is um, thoughts that people had. But but what it is is we already are doing all of that. So there's no need to put that in there. The only time you put that in there is if you're not in compliance. But because we're in compliance with it, we just have to show the data that shows that we are in compliance. And so I think your recommendation was to do it as a group? Right, so or to go through it, look at it, but because you don't, we, one of the things about being in Polish to Governance is you're, you're showing compliance in every, you're, if you're showing compliance in everything you're doing, right, and we're always moving forward to improve what we're doing, mm -hmm. and you're just trying not to break the law in any way or go outside of policy governance. So, in my mind, looking through this, there's nothing we've done to be out of compliance with this policy. And there's no need to go through each subcategory for an interpretation when you want the broader picture and then the data, which is the subcategories, to back up your interpretation. That being said, you guys get it from there because I think it's bigger than, I think it's simple and it's easy to simplify with the interpretation and the data, but I think because there's too many different pieces, so I think for, everyone needs to look at it. Yep, so for, okay. for context, I think the piece we want to keep in mind when we do these is not here and today. No. But it is <clears throat> two years from now, we've changed 60% of us over. Are we still being true to what the policy governance guidelines or rules are? But I want to set something right now that says we're going to check on ourselves mm -hmm. and make sure that we are following what it is we said we're going to do. Right. And then as we go through the next years and we get elections and we have board changeovers, we continue that check and, and adjust if we have to, but we're consciously looking at what it is we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is how do and we want to... And this is where we disagree on it. Right. And that's always healthy. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Because but, I get what he's saying, but if you look back at like our um, retreat meeting, mm -hmm. and we set up a whole year plan of like meeting with Val for mm -hmm. our 2.0 um, ways of implementing and making sure our new board members are educated in policy governance. Mm -hmm. So we already have all those pieces in place. So that doesn't make us out of compliance with this. It makes right. us in compliance with it. So there's yep. no reason to say that we're out of compliance and list those things as to be mm -hmm. better at. Because we're a board, and it's up to the board to do these things as a board. So that's the, like, those are the, those are the, those are the, so that's why it's like it is. Like, you have that one piece of the data showing that we're in compliance, and then you have the part underneath it where it says, if you marked anything other than in compliance, explain, and then you have all that stuff explaining it. But to me, did, that did you come up with this template, or was this a template that was provided? That was no, a template I, provided. Yeah, I got this okay. from okay. another. So we've, another we've tried to tweak it, and group. I tweaked it a little bit. Sean tweaked it a little bit. Okay. So. 
I would probably have to spend more time looking at it. You should, and I recommend you do because it's. I had to print Am it I out. next? Like, who's next? I had to print it out. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that's on the annual agenda. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm really having a hard time following I'm not, I'm not what we're debating okay. here. Yep, right. so, so the issue really is... <laughs> the um, format for okay, it. The form, okay, the format so the is, format is key. Okay, yeah. because it looks like, as I, I look over, it looks like there are... There's the sections just like the monitoring reports that Sean does, where yep. it says here's this this section, which would be one, yep. and then you would interpret that section. Right. And then you go to two, and then you do... You nope, but that's different. That's a completely different one. Okay. 4.2, this would be... Right. So 4.1 has all of its subcategories, and that's where you have to be careful. So you want to make sure you, all your subcategories are in 4.1. Otherwise, you're going to have 4.1.1, and then you're going to have... 4.2.1. Can you not interpret that as a whole to explain that whole paragraph? I actually went onto yes. the policy governance page and looked up all of these yeah. things. Nice I recommend job. you do it too because yeah. that's how I came up with the conclusion that you don't want to take out each subcategory under the so policy 4.1 is itself. Yeah. That's its whole entity. The Are board will call the sense of group responsibility. The yep. board, not the staff, will be responsible for excellence and governance. Yep. The board will. So that's all. That's one. all it. And then and everything in those boxes support that if we're in compliance with 4.1. Mm -hmm. Okay, 4.2 is something completely different. Yeah, the board will direct control and inspire the organization through the careful establishment of broad written policies reflecting the board's values and perspectives. That's 4.2? That's 4.2. And then there's an A, and there's. Right, we'll do these independently. 4.1 4 right, was a specific a. Okay. piece. So the question is about the format for how one we're going to determine and an interpretation of what it's asking us to do. I interpret this to mean that we are responsible for, and we paraphrase it and put it in our own words. Right, right. right. and get it out of the boxes. Yeah. And get it out of the boxes. Yeah. Okay. And then underneath it, we give the evidence for how we are in compliance, and we report the out whether we're compliant or not compliant. Right. right. Okay. And if not compliant, what are we going to do and to get back? And then do the plan. Right. Yeah. So in doing it that way, I report we're in compliance with it. In and you're opinion, doing it as a whole. If you're doing it as a whole. As a whole, meaning Four point section one. one as a whole. Exactly. And then section two as a whole. I haven't done section two. Okay. Not, but, but this is just about section one. Okay. So then the... the the disagreement was then you the want to take it point by piece point. By point piece. Four dot one one, four dot one two. Oh, I got you. Okay. Four okay. dot one three. So what's, it, what's four dot one one? Well, if you take out the board it's responsibility got an overall one, and oh gosh, you're a touch thing, and then the board, <laughs> not the staff, will be responsible for excellence in government. That would be one point two, and then the board will monitor, uh, be initiated or policy. Not that's three. So each sentence four one, four one. will be. 4.1.1, 4.1.2, 4.1.3. Right. Uh, I was okay. I was thinking okay. each section of mm -hmm. 4.1 okay. having an interpretation. And Sean, when I'm, you do I'm, yours, that is not how you do it, is it? Don't yeah. you take the broad one and then list it? No, but I do interpretation and evidence for the elements. And then I do... I, right. I, and I do, do compliance or not with each one of those because... There are some areas, you, you may have a component, like for example, in 4.1 governing style, you may say you're in compliance for uh, number one, number three, th through the end, but number two, there's something there that you're not. Number two meaning like the board, not the staff, will be responsible for excellence in governing? No, mm -hmm. see, I'm reading it a little bit different. I see yeah. that more as like a policy statement at the beginning and that... Um, it's telling you, it says the emphasis on, and it's giving guidance about why you're doing what you're doing. And then I see the one through, <coughs> what's the last, is it six? Where's the six. six. Then I, th I see one through six as more, um, more of the actions of the board. Mm -hmm. Like the self-monitoring. That oh, you so would, you're that the you would, above. you would okay. have an interpretation mm -hmm. of one through yeah, six and evidence for on. each one of right. those. Right. Yeah. And that you would have you could be in compliance with uh, one or more of those and out of compliance with one or more of those. Right. Right. Which would make you out of compliance with the whole right. policy, even if one element was out of compliance. Right. And then you do the same thing I do, which is you make a plan and a timeline right. and you, you remedy it. 
So can I clarify? Yeah. So you're, you're, John, you're speaking to saying that first paragraph, that's not a one, it's the big broad thing. The board will govern lawfully absorbing the principles of policy governance model with an emphasis on. Mm -hmm. And then each A, A through G being the elements of that piece. So accordingly, that, that one through six is what gets you to gets you the to outward a, vision, B, C, the encouragement D. of diversity, okay. the strategic leadership. Okay. Because outward vision rather than internal preoccupation is sort of explained in one, which is we will cultivate a sense of, uh, cultivate a sense of group responsibility, right. responsible excellence mm -hmm. in governing, uh, initiator of policy. So one is sort of the action behind A. Right. I don't okay. know that they all mm -hmm. definitely tie together, but right. all mm -hmm. six together form how you get to the overall statement. Is that the top piece is a higher level, sure, B's a, a higher piece. level piece yeah. of, yeah, you can't tie A to one, B to two. Right, they don't it's directly. All six together, if you're doing them all, you are supporting the overall statement. Right. And so the question is, interpretation and uh, results on each of the six or on the 4.1 as a whole. Do we have to make any, are we just discussing this? We're just yeah. discussing. So I, I can spend a little time looking at this. I, I think we want to find a path forward that right. sets us on a, a okay. mission to be able to do this consistently, consistently <laughs> well, and be able to flush out if we have any issues that we need to fix. And I, I agree that the format to being able to report out on it does make sense. So I think coming to some sort mm -hmm. of consensus around how that layout's going to look is going to help us uh, be better at articulating where we are with certain elements and being clear about that. So that's a good thing to focus on. But I would certainly need some time to sit with this. Right, and I think every person on the board needs to look to sit, and yeah. say, I see we're in compliance, and okay. if someone thinks they're not and another person doesn't, we need to have those discussions because maybe somebody forgot our conversation of what our plans were and right. you okay. know, stuff like that. So okay. I think that's really, I mean, one person cannot fill one of these out, obviously, because right. we all have different different interpretations. We all come from different walks of life, and so. And we are cultivating a sense of group responsibility. Group. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. 4.1.1. Uh, but again, right. if, if, <laughs> if over time there is one. In case you're curious. I'll call it a one rogue element that's not necessarily following the plan that's got to somehow get flushed out. And, and dealt with the chair obviously needs to take a role, but Absolutely. somehow this may be an, a method to use that as leverage as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I think you've got a really good start here on the on the data, all those bullets, because mm -hmm. you could take those and reorganize them under like one through six where they fit. Right. Exactly. And then you just need to the probably get more specific in the interpretations for each of those six elements. So, do we want to do it in a meeting here? Or do we want to do them and bring think, them in? It I just seems like it's... So everyone has a copy of this. I yeah. think it's fine for us all to work on this as a working document, as far as I'm concerned. That's the beauty of the drive. So everyone can pick a different color, and Sean can be the overall helper of it all, the facilitator. Because he's got nothing else to do. I know, Sean, No, I, I think it would be good to come in with different drafts or but either you know, it even using this as a... Sometimes I need a fresh... From the superintendent, so... <laughs> Um, well, I would recommend to you, because looking at the annual agenda plan, you also have one due next month, and then the following month, yep. I think you're, We're and then there's a month or two off, and then, yeah. mm -hmm. because and this then was already so if you really want, maybe Boring. take a, maybe we could rearrange the annual agenda plan to push some out, so that yeah. you could take Absolutely. more time on the first one and yeah. get it the way you want it. Yeah, that makes sense. And okay. when you're saying that it's due, it's, it's, what's due is certain pieces to be interpreted. And right, to be right. I wanted to, I wanted to be able to right. touch on. I mean, we've got sections what four and five to. Yeah. But once we have the format down pat and the way we're all looking at it, the rest of them won't be that difficult. Right. It'll to do. it'll flow it'll flow easier. Right. Yeah. It's, it's all section four and there's eight of them. Okay. So all the way down. I mean, things like governance, investment, probably pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but when okay. you get down into yeah, some of them, making sure that. that the chairs roll. As that changes over time, still you want to make sure the you, you're doing it well, you're doing it right. Okay. I don't know that I'm saying that that's being done, but as as you roll through time and change that, 
whoever's sitting in that chair, these chairs don't you want to make open. sure they they work. We need so some rollers on those chairs. I'm good with taking the time. Okay. Um, do we each want to do some take that and manipulate the interpretation, or do we want to do it on the drive and come to one art form that we all agree on? Well, I don't know how anyone else is feeling, but I I definitely would like to sit with it and look at different drafts from my own, you know, like sort of alone in my own thinking mm -hmm. and sort of That's see how I can make my own sense of it and then hear other people's perspectives too, like give us all a pass at even just structuring the, the data that's already here, just in compliance in terms okay. of layout. Um, do you have a thought on any of this? I would bring it back to, for the same kind of discussion. Next yeah, because to me the format, like knowing how I'm reporting out on something and what the language and sort of the layout is, mm -hmm. is going to be something I need to wrap my head around. Right. And that was the intent of getting a starting point yeah, first Yeah, which I love. Format, Thank you for taking this on. A, this is great. Something to get a, a uh, discussion started. Yeah. So when you do this, too, make sure you're looking at the actual policy and not just the heading at the top. Okay. Because that's really key. In which one is the out. actual policy? Is, um, is it on here? It's on the website. Yeah. yeah. 4.1, there's the first paragraph, and so then we, there's numbers 1 through 6. Right. But this, then they're different from the ones in this document. They're not so much different as it's the it's. They should. If you're not going to use this kind of format, you really want to look at what the policy says I'm gonna cut and to go into your interpretation and moving. They are the same languages in those boxes, right? Though. Right. Um, Just cut them out and paste yeah. them in. Right. Yeah. It's, it's you know it's the, it's showing the difference in how we look at things on a computer. This is too busy for me. The screen, you know what I mean? Like a box is just too busy. <laughs> <laughs> and over time, but what we're doing is what I'm saying. Right. What so we doing. have four point zero to four point eight to. Correct. All over these. time, we've got those over eight time. to. Yeah. yeah. And right now, we're just focusing on four point one. Okay. Yeah. So we can do a little work on this to. Yeah, we can yeah. certainly move the annual agenda around to keep keep well, things. We would have uh, to, I would say, anyways, just because just, we've just already moved this it. twice. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I want to get it right. I don't want to. I don't want to rush it through. I want to make sure it's something that we do. So, all right. Thanks so for starting it. We'll put a. Let's put a continued. Hey, no, I said okay. if you started, it'd be done already. Who? You. Me? Yeah. No way. <laughs> We'll see what we get next. <laughs> I'm glad you started it. Thank you. All right. So, uh, so just template. No, no clarifying question. Sorry, we're sorry, sorry. Are, we, are, we, are we hoping, do, do you all want input on the way in which we're going to discuss this, or do you want input on our reactions to how we evaluate each of these points? Like, are we talking no, process we need, or content? So, here? the first thing we need to do is the process. How are we going to report that we're in compliance or out of compliance? Process and format. Like how right. are we so like, you know, Sean gives us his monitoring reports. Yeah. Do we want that kind of format? Okay. Or do we want to stick with the boxes and mm -hmm. then do the interpretation underneath? Okay. Which is double the work. As far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. Okay. You, like, you like a more narrative format? You like a quick reference with the boxes? That then the, 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 yeah, yeah, they both get to mm -hmm. the same point, but for different people. Right. Okay. So. Okay. And, and then at some point we'll do the actual substantive conversation about whether or not. Well, and well, goes. while you're do it, while you're figuring out the format, you can easily yeah. put in. The because she's content. got the subs, she's got the, the the points, the evidence down here, the way down here. Okay. Here's so all the data. The ones that you put in, you, you some of them might put in some. Yeah. Some okay. of them were. Right. Sean might have put so in some. So there's data. Yeah. So now all it's just a matter. Of working mm -hmm. on it. Nice job. So. Okay. so it's it's a starting point. Yeah. Um, That's where we need to go. Okay. okay. Great. So, next, t between now and December, whatever it is, ninth, ninth, um, if we can get an updated, if you can all put some some piece into the the drive, I think that's where okay. you are now, right? And that's mm -hmm. what you sent yep. out as yeah. a link to the drive. Um, and we can do. Take a stab it at it, and we'll, we'll get it fine-tuned and put comments, narrative, um, thoughts, mm -hmm. put them in italics or parentheses or whatever, however you want to separate <laughs> thoughts from content. 
Great. and we'll take a stab at it. We'll try to get down through the eight. Again, I want to set something in place that over time it's a habit to look at what it is we do and how we do it. Yeah. So I'd rather take the time to do it right than to do it fast and make it be a stamp the box routine. I don't want I don't want that to be the case. Okay. All right. Good. Great. Thank so you. So we will come back to that one. I appreciate the discussion. Um, recent community activities. Anything? Anybody got anything to report out? It's been a quick October. I don't know for anybody else, but it moved. STEM. That was fun. No, no. STEM. STEM. Huh? I did a walkthrough. You did? Yeah. Did. Janitory. Yeah, Mike was there. Did a yep. oh, you did. Oh, that's right. That was the night we had our we had a meeting. other meeting. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, the Halloween uh, community party. Oh, right. I heard that was oh, really yeah. fun. Yeah, it, was, it was great. It was really great. It was a lot of fun. I saw some awesome. videos online about kids dancing. I had a great time. <laughs> that was really, great. really good. It was really good. And, and uh, in a subsequent meeting, what was that meeting called? They, uh, you hosted Sean. Oh, the Winooski Health and Wellness and the Early Childhood Network and the Promise Communities. Yep. That was a, an interesting meeting trying to sort of align three related but distinct efforts at positive change in Winooski. That was a really good one. Uh, and mm -hmm. one of the things that we talked about at the table that I was sitting at was how it's great to have a committed group of townsfolk trying to make change for um, you know traditionally marginalized population and it's great to have events that seek to bring in everyone uh, you know no matter what your level of need like a community party you know down at the Halloween like the mm. STEM thing I mean just sort of great events that Winooski can show up at and recognize itself yeah. that was a great one that's awesome yeah I'm done. All right. Anything else? Any uh, items for the agenda next time? We'll start uh, crossing over with budget. Uh, Tori was asking me about our conversation about the data on discipline and so forth, and we said that we would pick that back up when we had more data. Is that what we agreed to last time? Mm -hmm. I was trying to remember, and that was going to be springtime. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that it's in the, we, we, it's a good reminder because yeah, I don't know that we put it explicitly in the, in the agenda plan, but we will get it in there. Okay. It'll be great. Yeah. All right. Upcoming events, craft fair on the 21st, parent-teacher conferences on the 23rd, Thanksgiving recess in the week of Thanksgiving, 23 to 27. Budget meetings, December 2, 9, 16, 23, and January 6th. So weekly through the December. The 23rd? <laughs> oh, we already had that conversation. We, We're going to be so <laughs> We can, we, we'll have to see where we end up and where we work it out. Uh, we do have an end point on the other end as well. Mm -hmm. And then as the girls mentioned, uh, the Dollars for Scholars, the next regular board meeting on the 9th. And at this point, I would accept a motion to move into executive session. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?